up guys, Roti Dragon here, and we are talking about Sonic the Hedgehog, the rise and fall of the brand and series and where it's going. Because if there's anything happening right now, it's the hype that is Sonic. We have the video games, the comic books, the movies, the cartoons. This is one of the most marketable character icons ever. In video game history, Sonic is your boy. When he first came out, he had 15 million units sold. Just legendary when it comes to the history of gaming. He really has an important place in there, and that's kind of why I want to talk about it. Sonic Colors just came out. I played the heck out of it. We're going to talk through the history of Sonic and see the rise and fall of this series and why it is like it is today. And just so you know, you're getting an expert kind of perspective on this from a professional, you know? I looked this up on Wikipedia. I'm a professional at Sonic, okay? I know about some of the fan comics. Yo, I watched the TV show where <laughs> the little Sonic kids are playing instruments and stuff. Leave a comment if you know what that was. <laughs> Don't unsub. Ah, please. Why do people like Sonic? I'm just gonna say it's because he's a cute animal. He's super fast. He can turn into a ball, and I don't know why, but people have this fascination with ball shapes bouncy objects in like really geometric cool patterns. The first game song, The Hedgehog, if you're playing on the levels, that's kind of like vapor wavy. The graphic design in that first game is spectacular. I think outside of Sonic, kids who play this game got inspired as musicians, artists, filmmakers, everything, because the game was so engrossing in every single way and it didn't necessarily have to be, but they were trying to make it as good as it could be. In the day, Sega, this was their competition with Mario. They were trying to kill Mario with their own character and it ended up being Sonic, which is cool because nowadays you see Sonic collaborating with Mario in some kind of Olympic games or you go to arcades, you see like a Mario and Sonic cabinet together or maybe a game of them playing together and both in Super Smash Bros, right? But back in the day, it was 1991, Sonic was rivaling with Mario and that was done purposely. Yeah, who wants a plumber over here? Yeah, I mean, that's cool. You can play as a plumber that jumps and stuff. You could be a really fast, radical animal dude that eats chili dogs. If you're really into the nerdy gaming side, you know what a speed run is. Basically trying to beat a game as fast as you can so you can rank up in like the leaderboards as one of the top speed runners in video game history for it, like maybe a Sonic game. Well, it kind of started there because you had these levels that had so much complexity, no map. You just kind of have to know the level really well. And if you don't know the level, if you haven't played the game yet, you can't master it. You can't get through it fast because you're gonna hit all these speed bumps. But once you figure out the levels, you're gonna be darting stage one all the way to the end and it's gonna feel amazing. You're gonna get a dopamine rush and be like, man, I'm Sonic, I'm super fast. Let's speed run this ish. You feel me? And to get a little personal, when I was like five or six, it was ingrained to me that Sonic was super cool through the TV shows, but especially the Sonic the Hedgehog game that came out in 1991 on the Sega Genesis. And I knew this was cool because my neighbor had the game. I didn't have it, I just had a Super Nintendo, right? But my friend across the street had the Sonic game and we would go over like every week just to play the game and redo the first two or three levels. We never beat it, by the way, because we were kids and this was before Game Bag. I think the first Sonic the Hedgehog Hedgehog games is one of the most replayable games ever. I think I played it over a thousand times and I beat it only a handful of times within a thousand. Sometimes I'll just pick it up, have a little bit of fun, put it back down, play that first level just for fun. Developers, you guys are amazing. You guys rock. People out there, get, show some love to Sega and the people who are behind it because at least back then, they made a really magnificent game and they didn't try to cheap out with DLCs like that. Let's move on to a handful of factors why Sonic had a jumbled kind of upbringing. How does it go from the top to kind of just trailing off to the bottom right now? Sonic Mania back in 2017, probably one of their newer games besides Remix that they've been releasing and that only had 1 million in sales. That's good, but it definitely isn't how it used to be. Where Sonic Adventure got 4 million sales, Sonic Adventure 2 got 3 million sales, Sonic the Hedgehog got 44 million in sales wow wow yeah it just does not compete man will it ever reach that high again
One factor that really shook the core of what Sonic is, the transition from 2D Sonic to 3D Sonic, because these are, believe it or not, different beings. And they kind of showed that with Sonic Generations where they have the Sonic characters like separate. You have 2D Sonic and 3D Sonic. Uh, and by the way, thank you Sega for like listening to us and making a game just kind of what we're talking about. Companies don't do that. Looking at you, Nintendo. Sonic Adventures came out in 1998, roughly seven years after the first Sonic the Hedgehog game. And when this happened, he had a whole new look. He looked more edgy, he looked more cool. He actually had a voice versus an animated pixelated character. You guys know what I'm talking about. I remember Sonic Adventures, it was on the Dreamcast. I played it as a kid and I actually beat that one multiple times, it was really fun. You have a bunch of different characters, new characters in fact. The introduction of the Chows, whether some of you like that or not. They're kind of like aliens, but cute little creatures. I don't know, it could be an enemy in Dragon Quest or something. But you can raise them, you can race them. This was just one of the aspects of the game. It was like a mini game within the game. The problem was that it was such a drastic change from 2D to 3D because before we had only known Sonic to run fast on a 2D plane, fight a boss, and then keep that going. But 3D was just such a different game in general. You could go in 360 degrees, which makes sense. And I think that just changed the gameplay of what Sonic originally was. It was more radical in the 3D version. And I think there was a calmer and tamer, more vapor wavy, chill version of Sonic was the 2D version. And a lot of people just didn't like that. They didn't like how he looked different. Because if you really go back to the Sonic the Hedgehog 2D version, right? The video games follow very simple storylines. And this is once again, another reason because like on 3D side of Sonic, there are so many crazy storylines. They introduce new characters like Shadow and Ro, why are these characters here? We're just here for the main cast. Sonic, Tails, Knuckles, and Amy, right? And Amy kind of makes it. <laughs> I think if you're on the 2D side of Sonic, you'd say something like that. But on the 3D side, there's just so many more characters and thus started the OC Sonic trend, which was a whole new generation of Sonic fans. So I'm not saying that it didn't work because obviously there was a lot of people who loved Sonic 3D and made their own characters out of that. But with the 3D version, it just made people creatively like create some of the craziest stuff online. I don't recommend you Google it. I've been there, I've done that. I'm emotionally scarred. Maybe that's why I am in my room making this video. Hello, talking to you. To roll that all back, the 2D to 3D transition, it just divided the fan base, really. It never really got back, because once 3D started, it just changed the whole game. And Sega kind of died too, you know, or their consoles kind of died. Sega still is a publishing company. They still make games. They just don't have their own console. So that was a big thing. There was a whole console war, which is a separate video. So it's not gonna be in here cause it could be like 30 minutes long and I'm not doing that to myself. If you want to see it, just smash that like button. <laughs> you know, maybe I'll make it. On to the next factor, which is harsh realities. PlayStation had a DVD player, period. In the console war, that is Dreamcast versus PlayStation or PlayStation 2. It was, Dreamcast was kind of in the middle. And honestly, y you probably want a PlayStation 2, or if you're gonna spend money, you're gonna buy a PlayStation 2 and not a Dreamcast because the games are just way better. They have better functionality, better graphics, better sounds, and it plays DVDs. Like you can't go wrong with a PS2. Meanwhile, Dreamcast is kind of eating the dust. Like it came out, but it was for a very small generation. It had an awkward, release. Nintendo had so many iconic characters by this point. They had Samus, they had Kirby, they had Mario, they have Link. So many different iconic characters on the Nintendo side. And what did Sega have? Sonic. No, Shinmu doesn't count. That's for you nerdy gamers out there that know about it. Okay. Power Stone. Yeah, once again, only nerdy gamers know about that stuff. Not like normies, okay? Respect the normies sometimes because they do dictate the success of this stuff because they're the ones who can buy it and make it profitable, okay? The reality is normies matter. They know the character. If they'll buy a little plushie or a game of the character, that means that it legitimizes the brand, the franchise, and the only thing Sega really had for it at that point was Sonic. And that just wasn't enough for someone to go out and buy a console. People weren't thinking, oh man, I'm gonna buy a 
a Dreamcast to play, I guess Sonic, yeah, <laughs> you know? Meanwhile, you think of Nintendo, you're like, oh yeah, I gotta get a Nintendo system. They got Mario, they got Legend of Zelda, they got Metroid, they got Kirby, they got Yoshi, they got all these cool characters with all their own games. I'm a deep dive in that stuff and have some fun. And don't forget about PlayStation. They had all the next gen Final Fantasy games, Crash Bandicoot, they have Sackboy, they have Ratchet and Clank, Jack and Daxter. Oh my God, I love that game so much. Spyro, PlayStation had a lot of stuff already going for it. And so that's really like a crash course in the harsh reality of the console war is that Dreamcast came out really awkwardly between the PlayStation and PlayStation 2. And meanwhile, Nintendo was there and though they kind of had an awkward thing with like the 64 and the GameCube, like it was still competitive because of the branding, the icons, the character. Sega had none of that, man. And they were really fighting tooth and nail to survive. And at least they're still around today as a publishing company, which is in itself a win. So that's definitely one of the bigger reasons why Sonic kind of had a great fall, right? It's not even his fault. Because at that time, let's be honest, Sonic was still killing it. He had a cartoon shows, multiple cartoon shows, comic books, video games coming out really fucking fast. Like every couple of years, there was a new Sonic game with a new comic book and cartoon show to go with it so you could watch and consume this whole new story. Sonic Boom was the last one they did and that really disappointed me, man. That cartoon wasn't that great. I am a grown human and I'll admit it. I watch cartoon shows. I've even seen a couple episodes of Sonic Boom. Uh, not another speeding ticket. I'll fight it in court, but I don't think they're gonna accept gotta go fast as a medical condition. Nowadays, it's very apparent. People are aware of like developers and people who make the games. But back then, it's like, you knew a few names. You didn't know the people behind each game and the why they were good. But that's another factor that really had a hard hit on Sonic because with the franchise or Sega really going downhill, the consoles losing, and they lost so many talented artists and creatives that were into making games that were like the ones they grew up playing, right? All these artists that had really creative ideas to make Sonic great were kind of thrown out the window because can I afford it? And plus we have deadlines to meet, so we gotta get this game out fast. So we don't have time to diddly dally and brainstorm. We just gotta make a game and put it out. And what does that mean? It means a lot of glitches, poor stories. It means not really fleshed out ideas, just a lot of like conceptual things. And maybe this is the problem whenever you become a bigger publishing company. There are just so many hands into one pot and there's like no clear directive of what this thing is. It gets confusing. And at the end of the day, it's like, whose fault is it? It's not one person, it's like the whole whole entity is just having problems. And we see this again and again and again, even now with current video game, where we see like big triple A companies and they're re-releasing the best games that they made. GTA 5, I'm, I'm at least say that, man. I can't believe we were so hyped up for something. Yo, why is there a new Elder Scroll game? It's been so long. I feel like it's been like over 10 years. Anyway, I'm sure you're kind of getting the point here. Whenever a bigger player comes in and buys out a company and just takes over so that they can make money off of it, that leads us to kind of where Sonic is right now. Quality over quantity. Let me just tell you straight up what it feels and looks like, okay? On the screen right here. I'm not gonna be looking up. Sonic the Hedgehog 1991. Sonic the Hedgehog 1991, 8-bit. Sonic the Hedgehog 2, 1992. Sonic the Hedgehog 2, 16-bit, 1992. Sonic the Hedgehog Spinball, 1993. Sonic the Hedgehog CD, 1993. Sonic Chaos, 1993. Sonic the Hedgehog 3, 1994. Sonic and Knuckles, 1994. Sonic the Hedgehog Triple Trouble, 1994. Knuckles Chaotix, 1995. Tails, Sky Patrol, 1995. Tails Adventures, 1995. Sonic Labyrinth, 1995. Sonic Blast, 1996. Sonic Advance, 2001. Sonic Advance 2, 2002. Sonic Advance 3, 2004. <laughs> Sonic Rush, 2005. Sonic Rivals, 2006. Sonic Rush Adventures, 2007. Sonic Rivals 2, 2007. Sonic the Hedgehog 4, Episode 1, 2010. Sonic Colors, 2010. Sonic Generations, 2011. Sonic the Hedgehog 4, Episode 2, 2012. Sonic Jump, 2012. Sonic Boom, Shadow Crystal 2014, Sonic Bloom, Fire and Ice 2016, Sonic Mania 2017,
2017 Sonic Mania Plus 2018, and that's just the 2D platformers. Let me continue. 3D Action Adventure, Sega Sonic the Hedgehog 1993, Sonic 3D Blast 1991, Sonic Adventures 1998, Sonic Adventures 2 2001, Sonic Heroes 2003, Shadow the Hedgehog 2005, Sonic the Hedgehog 2006, Sonic in the Secret Rings 2007, Sonic Unleash 2008, Sonic in the Black Knight 2009, Sonic Colors 2010, Sonic Generations 2011, Sonic Lost Worlds 2013, Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric 2014, Sonic Forces 2017, it goes on and on. There's at least 20 more titles that are offering puzzle games, racing games, entertainment, creative fighting games, adventures, RPG games, endless runners. Let's not even include all the mods and everything made by the fans that Sega actually supports and gives a thumbs up to. Thank you, Sega, once again. Sega is a cool company, but it's obvious from this whole list that I just made that they are releasing multiple games a year sometimes, okay? And that was for 2D and 3D, okay? It looks like 2018-ish is when they Stop because I guess they were making the movie that came out and now they're slowly trying to revive it with Sonic Colors remake that came out on all the consoles that happened like not even a few weeks ago. <laughs> I think I made my piece, I made my point about quantity over quality. Leave a comment if you have your own thoughts on that. Next is that every time a new Sonic game comes out, what's the first thing you're thinking about once you pick up that game and you put it in your console and you start playing it? Because if you don't say bugs, you are a liar, man. I know you, you're right now, you're like trying to get the game so you can play it on your console and you're gonna be like, oh man, I'm gonna stream all this video and tweet about why this game is glitching the heck out. This just happened with Sonic Colors. These are facts. Sonic Colors originally came out November 11th, 2010. It is 2021, dude. Like, yo, why did Sonic Colors Ultimate, the remake, even have bugs? And this is what I'm talking about. I am not really excited for another Sonic game. I'm excited to be disappointed. Yes, the games are fun, but there's always something wrong. It's just not the full cake, man. It's always like a slice that's kind of been left out. And unless it's Sonic Mania, which was kind of produced and developed by some fans, unless a Sonic Mania 2 comes out, people are just not excited for 3D Sonic because of how many times we've been disappointed. I think this scene alone will say, oh, that needs to be said. Oh man, this video wasn't supposed to roast Sonic. I'm a fan, obviously, you know, <laughs> but uh, dang, I, <laughs> it's hard when you really look into the facts, it's really sad, man. And I, it, this is why I'm making this series of rise and falls for like different franchises, not only Sonic. I made one for Metroid that came out like the other week. You can watch that, bam, it's really fun right here in the bio. I'll link it. There are so many cool stories about this and it's really intriguing to learn about because you've learned about how things work or don't work or why things are the way they are in this current generation of, you know, capitalism, right? The amazing free market. I'm not gonna share my opinions on that though. But the free market does lead us to one thing, which is the final factor. It's a cash grab. Right now, Sonic is just trying to make you buy it. They're not really thinking about the quality unless it's the live action movies. And it's so sad that it took the whole internet to basically do a kickflip right into Sonic's face on the live action movie to make them change this model to this model, okay? This was really serious when the movie came out, okay? And it was kind of a big press for the movie itself. It made us all kind of excited for it because, yo, Sega, once again, did what the fans Fans wanted and thumbs up to them because they listened you know they're like no change Sonic man he's gotta look cool he can't look like a weird human mutant dude <laughs> that guy fingers no gloves what I know y'all thinking about that too man why why do they do that dear dear somebody <laughs> and message in a bottle please I need to know <laughs> who made this original design because Sonic Colors just came out and obviously it's a good game. There wasn't really anything special that they did for it for the release. It's a 10 year old game. You'd think they would have more DLCs or I don't know, quality of life improvement. No, it's basically a port. Maybe it's a little bit of graphical enhancement if you could even think that, you know, I think you used a different like software lighting generator to like make things look more bloomy and, and cool. But like the whole sound, <laughs> an audio of the game. Ah, oh, man, I don't want to go into this. This deserves a review. Basically, the music in the game is done differently and, and the old music is better from the original 2010 Sonic Colors. I'm really big on gaming OSTs, okay? You guys 
just so you know. I listen to it all the time on my free time. And that bugged me super hard. You couldn't even go back to the original OST from the old 2010 Sonic Color game. You just had to deal with a new one. And it was just different instruments, different MIDI. I'm a MIDI guy. I like the MIDI notes. Orchestra's new master version is cool, but like there's something nostalgic about those MIDI notes, if you know what I'm saying. But basically the remake just kind of fell flat. But hey, you know what? Sega can do that kind of thing. Here's a surprise. With all of that cash grab personality and effort put into Sonic Colors, the new movie, everything promoting this game, right? It had 2 million copies sold. And that's kind of a lot. It hasn't been that high for a long time. And no, it's not like 15 million like the original or even like four or five million like Sonic Adventures, but getting there, right? So, I mean, maybe there's a chance for a revival. The rise and fall and rise again of the Sonic franchise. I, you know, I'll be honest. I really like the new movie with Jim Carrey as the Eggman. And then at the end, whenever he went into the Sonic world, I was thinking that was going to happen when I watched the movie. And when it did, I was like, yes. Did it right you did the cash grab right and you know what i paid for all this stuff sonic i'm still paying for sonic franchise stuff so what can i say i'm an addict i'm a nerd it's kind of my job to invest in the Sonic. I can write it off because I made this video. <laughs> Big brain thinking right there. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> I mean, on the real note, I'm making this video because Blue Vivacity is a YouTuber that just releases Sonic videos. And I saw one of their videos on my timeline and I watched it and I was like, yo, I gotta make a Sonic video, period. Like this is, this is my life, man. Like. I gotta talk about it, man. This is so cool. I was inspired by YouTubers. So the fan base is really what's keeping it driven. And uh, I just think Sega loves the fan base too. They're always doing stretches to like make them happy and do what they can with what's at play. Like, I don't think it's Sega's fault. I think the problem is just money, trying to make more money and, and keeping a business afloat. It's a very complex thing. And that's a whole side of it. I'm like, I'm not a financial advisor. So like, I don't, know what to say about that point but maybe someone on youtube will and maybe they'll make a video about it someday are you excited for the new sonic movie that's gonna have knuckles what are you excited about for the sonic franchise i have a discord come join and we'll talk about nerdy stuff i'm gonna link that in the bio yeah man you guys have a great day stop hey make love anybody can be a hero this is real t dragon saying bye bye